name is Derek Fisher, and uh, I'm going to walk through a little bit of risk rating uh, so that we uh, can take a look at what goes into understanding risk and how we quantify the risk to an organization. So I'm going to use OWASP risk rating as part of this effort here. And OWASP takes a pretty simplistic view of how we calculate risk. And it really comes down to the likelihood multiplied by the impact, and that equals your overall risk. So what does that look like? So first thing we need to do is identify the risk that we're trying to rate. This could be something like the circumvention of authentication, uh, maybe uh, a system that has um, internet access uh, with sensitive data. Um, you know, your risk could be um, or vulnerability. When we look at first identifying that risk, then we wanna look at the factors for estimating the likelihood uh, of that vulnerability or that risk being um, leveraged. And then we're going to look at the factors for how we estimate the impact. And I'm going to cover that here in a second. And that comes out to understanding what the severity of the risk is. And then you decide on what to fix. And deciding on what to fix uh, is really based on what the organiz organization's uh, risk tolerance is. So the first step to identifying a risk um, that needs to be rated is that you need to gather the information about the threat uh, agent that's involved. So that's going to be the attacker, uh, what type of attack will be used, and the vulnerability that's involved in the risk. And then the impact of, the, of it, a successful exploit of that vulnerability or of that risk to the business. And when we're looking at estimating the likelihood, there's two different factors that we're going to look at. One is the threat agent factors, and the other one is the vulnerability factors. And this is really to understand, well, how likely is this vulnerability going to be? And not every vulnerability or every risk uh, is the same for every organization. So for instance, um, you may work in an organization where the likelihood is much higher because you don't have the same uh, security controls in place as another uh, organization uh, that might have a similar risk, but their security controls are, uh, are higher. So they're able to uh, mitigate the risk or the, or the vulnerability. This is the individual or group um, that will uh, leverage that risk or leverage that vulnerability um, to be able to uh, perpetrate the attack. And so you wanna take the worst case scenario when you're looking at a threat agent. The vulnerability is gonna be, how easy is it to discover this vulnerability? How easy is it to uh, exploit it? Um, and you need to uh, assume or you need to put that in the context of the threat agent that you identified above. So there's a couple different threat agent factors, the skill level, you know, how skillful are the threat actors? What are their motivations? It depends on, are they uh, looking for fame? Are they looking for money? Are they trying to gain persistent access into a system to then you know, uh, do additional damage? Um, and that really depends on the you know, threat agent and their motive. And then what's the opportunity? You know, is it something easy for somebody to, uh, to uh, exploit? And how large of a threat agent group is there? Uh, so if you have, if it's a, a large group, like if we're talking about script kitties, uh, you're talking about probably a very large population. If you're talking about advanced persistent threats, well, that's probably a smaller population. So then the vulnerability factors that come into play here is, you know, what's the ease of discovery? What's the ease of exploit? You know, can I find this um, using uh, Shodan uh, or, you know, some automated tools or something like that? And once I discover that, can I, again, use automated tools uh, tools to actually exploit it? And awareness, how well known is this? Is this a public exploit? Uh, is this a public um, CVE or is it, um, is it uh, a zero day or, you know, unknown? And then the intrusion detection, am I going to, if I'm an attacker or, um, you know, if, if, uh, if I'm an organization, how easy is it for my organization to identify vulnerability being exploited? So when we estimate impact, we're looking at two different factors. One is the technical impact. The other is the business impact. So when we talk about the technical impact, it really comes down to the uh, understanding the magnitude of the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability impact on the system. So again, this is based on the, on the system itself. So the servers, the network, um, the data, then there's the business impact, and this really means, you know, what is the what is the impact to the business itself? Um, is the business going to go bankrupt if something like this happens, or is this just going to be uh, a little blip on the radar? So the technical impact factors: loss of confidentiality, loss of integrity, loss of availability, loss of accountability. So you know, if if this vulnerability was to be 
uh, exploited, um, how much data is going to be dis uh, disclosed, how much data is going to be damaged, um, will systems go down, uh, will I be able to trace this back to a, a, an, um, an attacker. And then for the business impact factors, you want to look at the financial uh, damage. You know, is this going to, again, cause the company to go bankrupt? Is it going to uh, smear the name of the company? Um, is, are there going to be regulatory and compliance uh, implications um, for this uh, being exploited? Uh, is there privacy violations? And if so, you know, there's a lot of impact that's going to, uh, business impact that's going to come along with that as well. Once we understand these, these different factors, we want to determine what the severity is of that risk. So in this case, you know, there's there's a couple different ways to do this. Well, two different ways to do this. There's an informal. So this is where, um, you know, you're just doing it kind of ad hoc. You're looking at uh, asking, you know, basic questions about risk and, and you know, you want to ask questions like, well, what can go wrong and, and how do we uh, fix this? And then there's a repeatable way of trying to do this. And, and I think that's what we're going to talk about here is, is the OWASP risk rating uh, type of methodology where there's a process that's defined, there's tools that are being used, uh, it gets into uh, a risk you know, process within the organization, um, but there's a, a formal way of identifying and managing these risks once they're identified. So taking a simple example, you know, and we'll, I'll show this here in a minute, but what you would come out with is, you know, you look at your threat agent factors, you look at your vulnerability factors, your technical impact, your business impact, and you assign a score to each one of those. And the score could be from uh, one to nine. And so the, you know, the higher, uh, the higher the impact uh, or the higher the factor, uh, the higher score goes. And so what you end up doing here with like on the top here, we see threat agent factors and vulnerability factors is you can uh, assign scores. You know, if the skill level doesn't require a lot of skill, well, that's going to be a higher score. If the size is very small, well, that's going to be a low score. And so you see, you know, skill level five, size one, um, and you would um, assign values to each one of these and then average them out and come out to an overall likelihood, which is a 4.3 in this case. And again, there's this is just numbers that we're just you know showing here. Uh, we'll go through a specific example here in a minute. And then you look at the technical impact and the business impact. Now, OWASP risk rating actually will state that you can separate those out. You know, maybe your organization's more, they wanna know more about the business impact and don't really care about the technical impact or vice versa. So you can split those out or you can have them, again, combined and averaged. So, you know, the loss of confidentiality in this case is very high, assuming that an attacker would be able to steal a lot of data. And uh, maybe the non-compliance here is low, financial damage is low. Uh, so you come out with these scores here again. The overall down here in the bottom left shows that the likelihood is 4.3. Business impact is 2.2. Technical impact is 7.2. And you can, you can, again, average the business and technical together to get a, an overall impact. Um, but in this case, you know, we keep them separate. Uh, separated. And you can see here that the likelihood is medium, uh, the business impact is low, but the technical impact is high. So the organization can then take that into consideration and say, okay, well, what do I need to fix then? If this is a low effort, low cost, uh, but the risk level is uh, high, well, obviously that's where I want to focus my effort. I want to put it into the uh, case where um, you know, I can get more, more bang for my buck. So let's take a little bit of an example here. So let's say that we have a, um, an application called My Health Records. It's a SaaS application and it's used for um, managing uh, patient data. Again, we're just going to use this as a simple example here, but, you know, the user must authenticate using a username and password. The application only allows view rights, not updating of medical information. User can access the application from multiple devices. Uh, there's a document viewer to allow you to view medical records and user can print documents. So let's say we had a penetration test that was done on this application. The pen tester found that there was an authentication bypass that allows them to access the application as an administrator, giving them access to PHI. So in other words, if the penetration tester was able to basically uh, log in as an administrator, and maybe they could do that through uh, elevation of privileges, maybe they were able to, um, you know, bypass authentication through other means. We'll talk about that here in a minute, but uh, basically they were able to bypass the authentication in order to gain access to the system as an administrator. OWASP risk rating uh, calculator is an online um, calculator that we can use here to try to figure out what's the actual impact here. So again, if somebody was able to log in as an administrator, they would be able to see a lot of uh, PHI. Again, this is all kind of sample uh, test. You know, we're not, uh, we're not actually Formally going through this, this is more just an exercise here, but 
let's say that um, you know you need some technical skills to do this. Uh, well, let's say you need some advanced computer skills because you need to be able to do some uh, penetration testing. If you're trying to gain a PHI, there's a lot of reward there. Medical records are worth a lot of money on the dark web. What's the opportunity here? Special access or, or resources required? Some access, uh, we'll say special. You need some good testing tools to be able to do this. What's the size? Let's say anonymous internet users, all right? Because it could be anybody that's on the web. All right, so the threat agent factor uh, is high at a 6.7. So the vulnerability uh, details here. So let's say it's difficult, all right? because it might be difficult to actually find it. The ease of exploit, um, let's say it's difficult to, all right, because you had to have, have to have some special skills. The awareness, it, let's say it's not known, uh, it's not obvious, it's not public knowledge, let's say it's hidden, it hasn't been disclosed yet. Intrusion detection, yeah, we, we can log, the organization can log this and find out, but uh, so let's say logged and reviewed, all right. So that shows that the vulnerability factor is a medium. So what about the technical impact? Loss of confidentiality, absolutely. As an administrator, uh, let's say all data in the, uh, is disclosed. Loss of integrity, well, it can't in the application by default, they can't make modifications. We made that as one of the criteria. So let's say that um, minimal uh, corrupt data, all right? So loss of availability, minimal uh, services interrupted, and loss of accountability. Uh, if they could steal credentials from an, uh, an admin, um, it's gonna be very difficult to trace, but maybe not impossible. So the technical impact is gonna be a five, again, a medium. So what about the financial uh, impact here? I don't think it'll be significant in fact, you know, we know that uh, data is stolen frequently. So let's say minor effect. Reputation damage, well, yeah, could probably lose some major accounts. Non-compliance, if it's a healthcare application, you know, they're going to be held to HIPAA. And so therefore there could be, uh, depending on how this pans out, it could be a clear violation. Privacy violation, absolutely. So we'll say, uh, you know, depending on how large this application is, let's just say it's thousands of people. So again, the business impact is a 4.7. So here you can see the likelihood is a five. Impact um, is a, you know, round of five. Overall risk severity here is a medium. Using that information, the organization can then take that and say, okay, what do we want to do about this? How are we going to fix this? Um, is, if it's a critical or, or extremely, you know, a, a high one, they're going to put a little bit more effort into fixing it quickly. Um, but one of the things about this is that it gives you the ability to tailor this again, the technical impact and the business impact. If it's a higher business impact, uh, then maybe the organization would uh, tackle this much more quickly. But in this case, it's a medium. And honestly, in most organizations, a medium is not going to make everyone jump. Um, so it might sound uh, like a very awful vulnerability that was discovered. Um, but in the case of this uh, organization, uh, a medium may not make them uh, jump off their chairs and go fix. But uh, that's the uh, world we live in. But one of the things about this risk rating is that, again, it gives you context about the risk, about how to um, gives you enough information to be able to make a, uh, a intelligent decision about what to do with it once you um, uh, find a vulnerability or a risk. With that, I appreciate your time here and uh, I hope this was enjoyable and you learned something. Thank you.